Hello, everyone, and we are live at Canadian Music Week 2009. It's your girl, Dionise, host of the Friday Morning Show. I am here with the one and only Mr. Paul Quigley, Festival Director of Canadian Music Week. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thanks for having me. So great to, ha to be sitting here with you at the festival. How do you feel? You've got so much on your plate. You're organizing so many bands. Tell the world, what exactly is your role here? Uh... I see my role as, as the, the guy who tries to put the puzzle together. We have a team who work sort of year round listening to bands, you know, inviting artists, bands apply for the opportunity to play. And I compile all of that information. We get a list of, of bands that have been accepted and I try to put some good shows together and, and get everyone scheduled. And you have put some uh, great shows together. We will be checking out the kickoff party tonight. I know that uh, Bury the Bully is going to be there. Now, did you handpick these guys yourself? I, I can't take the credit. For the most part, I mean, there are a few that I, I'd like to think I handpicked, you know, choices of mine. But for the most part, it's sort of by committee is how the bands are chosen. There's not sort of one person who's picking them all. I like that. So it's a team effort, different uh, tastes, I'm yeah. sure, and, uh, you know, different types of music that people want at this, this venue. Yeah, now, what does it cater to? Is it open to all genres of music, this festival? We certainly do our best for that, yeah. I mean, dealing in the venues, we use, you know, bars for the most part. There's, you know, a focus on, you know, traditional sort of rock bands and singer-songwriters, but we have... You know, we have DJs coming in, we have hip-hop artists, we have jazz acts, we have some blues bands. You know, so we try to cover off as much as we can. And what is your favorite type of music, Paul? Uh, I, I'm partial to sort of independent artists. I grew up, you know, since I was 14 going to see live music. So this Canadian independent music scene has always been sort of my go-to for, for music of choice. Great. What about like Blue Rodeo or those types of bands? Oh, you can't deny songs like, yeah, Diamond Mind or, you know, things like that. Blue Rodeo's got some good stuff. They absolutely do. And this year, what are you expecting? Like, I mean, you're here every year. What do you think is going to be different about 2009? Uh, we've tried really hard this year to really bring the festival to the public more so than in years past. You know, the conference, its reputation is second to none, and that's, you know, that's been maintained year after year. But there's been a bit of a public perception that the showcase events, the festivals are industry only sort of thing. You know, people are, aren't sure, should I go to that show? Can I go to that show? So this year we really wanted to, you know, give the festival a public face and say, yeah, you know, buy your wristbands and, and you're going to get into those shows you want to see. And I agree, but how did you guys do that? Because I, I've always known about it myself, but there are a lot of people that didn't know about it. Now they do, even just uh, on the Friday morning show. I mean, guess I have a lot of independent artists. They're all excited about Music Week. I've seen them in the halls. They're here. I'm yes. so thrilled that it is coming to the forefront. What did it take to bring it uh, to the public? What did it need to give it that boost? Uh, I think Neil Dixon, who's the president of CMW, He's been doing this a long time and, you know, he's checking out other events constantly and he just, when we started talking about this year, that was sort of his mandate that said, you know, this year we, we really got to do it big and we really have to take it to the public, you know, sort of <clears throat> in the past there's been, you know, festival branding where it's, you know, it looks like maybe 60 different shows that are happening but this year it's like we wanted to put all of those names on a poster and say no this is a unified event you know this is you know from block party to buck cherry through you know the ting tings to ill scarlet down with webster all of those sorts of acts you know your wristband is going to get you into those shows all in one place all these bands all it takes is one wristband and the public can come and enjoy all this music for the week yeah absolutely that is fabulous. Now, how long does it take to put something like this together? Like, okay, after the weekend, are you going to like Hawaii or something? Or are you right back at it planning for 2010? Hopefully I can sleep for a few days, but yeah, pretty much, you know, bands will start applying in April to play the 2010 event. You know, this year I'm not going, but Neil will be going to South by Southwest. You know, he'll be talking with bands down there, industry down there. 
starting to talk to next year. I mean, we're already, next year, um, we're gonna do a feature on India, and there have already been some consultants who have been doing work, doing some trips over there, so we're already, that side of the 2010 event is already being worked on. That is exciting, so definitely you have to plan ahead in this business. Absolutely, yeah, and it, it's amazing. I, I had bands emailing even this week saying, how can I play the festival, and it's sort of, you know, we've been working on scheduling since December, you know, so bands need to have gotten in touch prior to that to be considered just, you know, we're almost at 600 bands this year and that's, it's quite a task to coordinate. So there's definitely some long lead times needed to make it happen. So how do you stay so relaxed? Because you're a very beautiful spirit, you're very relaxed. And I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you right now. You are the director. I, I think I just don't know any better. I. <laughs> You know, it's the job is what it is, and I, I love music, and it's an exciting job, and you just, what, what are the options? I just, you just have to go with it. What would you like to see uh, in the future Canadian Music Weeks? Like, I know we're planning next year, but how do you see it even in maybe five to ten years? I mean, it's very digital now. There's a lot of changes in the music industry. How do you sort of see maybe that type of uh, change incorporated into the future music weeks? Well, I, I think having the conference tie in, those changes are always incorporated. So the event is constantly evolving with the industry. So we bring in, you know, the best panelists we can to speak to those developing issues and, you know, what are, what's happening now, what's coming down the road. So I think having the, the tie in of the conference and festival keeps the process evolving. If it was, you know, perhaps only one or the other, maybe you would lose touch with, you know, what's going on in the live music scene versus, you know, what's going on behind the desks kind of thing. But by, by doing them both concurrently, we just, we flow with it. It's almost like music school. I mean, these conferences, people definitely get out there and listen to these people that are speaking. I mean, these are professionals that have been in the industry a long time. And I don't think people are aware of the conferences and the knowledge they can gather from these people. Absolutely, it's, it surprises me every year that more bands don't take advantage of it. And we have, you know, on our desk, bands pick up passes in this room. We say, you know, you can get into showcases, but also, you know, check out the conference. These are all of the events that your performer pass will get you into. And there's so much information that you can get. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, experts in the field, whether you're looking to try and book live shows or whether you're interested in, you know, learning more about publishing, you know, having songs placed in movies, you know, how that comes about. All of that information is covered in those panel sessions and it's open to the artists. And what has the success rate been, uh, let's say for an artist that's coming here hoping to catch the attention of a big agent or a record company, is there a high success rate just from someone stepping in the doors, taking that big step to be a part of it and really network and get themselves out there? Have you heard any uh, stories like that through Music Week? There are definitely, yeah, a number of stories like that. I don't have specific stats, but yeah, each year we get positive feedback of, you know, an artist who showcased here and ends up you know, licensing an album for release in China or, you know, has an opportunity to play some shows in Australia and things like that. And situations that wouldn't have arisen had they not been here, you know, right place, the right time. And whether it's because someone saw their band play live or they just ran into them in the lobby and struck up a conversation. Yeah, we definitely get those stories every year. And speaking of China, that is the focus this year. So quite exciting. And maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Um, yeah, it, it definitely exciting. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's more of a conference focus. We do have a number of Chinese artists performing as well. Um, but the focus was to bring industry from China to Canada to see, you know, the Canadian talent that's available to offer that, you know, is, is looking to get out there in the world. So, yeah, bringing, you know, record labels and festival talent buyers and promoters from China over to Canada to you know, hopefully give Canadian acts and international acts the opportunity to enter the Chinese market. That is exciting. That is so exciting. And I think I saw them in the lobby. Like there was just some beautiful uh, attire and people down there. And what a beautiful experience. I'm so glad to be a part of it. 
And Paul, thank you so much for taking this time and uh, educating us more on Canadian Music Week. We really commend you because you've got quite the job. And I know, like we said, it's not going to end. You're already working on 2010. Yeah. But for now, we're going to enjoy uh, 2009 Canadian Music Week. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Quigley. Thank you. Thank you.